Good morning, NCWQ here, and the time is 11.05 a.m. The date is 3-16-2023, and I have y'all looking at EMSE, and I've gone over the earthquakes for today since midnight, and we're going to take a look at them on Google Earth, and I have already added them to Google Earth so that we can go to the areas as they've occurred. So we will start off with the first earthquake that occurred, which was a 7.0 in the Kermadec Islands region. This earthquake was 221 kilometers deep. And we can see that this earthquake here is happening off of the subduction zone. And the subduction zone goes this way. So it pushes inward. As we can see marked by the arrows. And we're going to go look this one up on Geonet. So we will go backwards. Actually, I'm going to go up here to the top. Hello? Okay, my thing's beeping. Okay, that was a 5.0. 4.7, 6.5, and it was 156 p.m. So they have it listed as a 6.5 and not 7.0. EMSC has it as a 7.0. March 16th, 2023, 6.5, 12 kilometers deep. So as you can see, EMSC has this earthquake as a 7.0, 22 kilometers deep. The next earthquake was a 4.2, and it was 10, F, 10 kilometers deep. This one is hitting near the continental convergent boundary. And again, we'll go and look at this one on GeoNet. See if we can find this one. This one occurred on the corner. That one is a 4.2. And it was moderate shaking, 10 kilometers deep. The next earthquake was a 5.0 Kermadec Islands region, and it was 10 F kilometers deep, which means that they don't have the exact depth of the earthquake. And again, you can see that it is happening on the subduction zone. The subduction zone moves at 88 millimeters per year. And we'll see if we can find this one on here, and it was a 5.0, so there is a 5.0 happening at 3.37.35 p.m. on the 16th in New Zealand, so we're looking for The 5.0 happening on the 17th, 1.53.03 a.m. So that would be this one. And remember, New Zealand is a day ahead of us with their times. The next earthquake was a 4.1, Sambawa region. 
and it was 13 kilometers deep. And it is happening near West Nusa Tenggara or Sumbawa. We can see that this shifts downward here. And this here is a subduction zone going that way. You can see by the arrow. This earthquake was 13 kilometers deep. The next earthquake was a 4.7 Luzon, Philippines, and it was 68 kilometers deep. This earthquake was happening near Amarang, and the closest volcano to that one, to this earthquake, is Penatabo. And Penatabo is a stratovolcano. See if we can get a view here. Penatabo has, has a um, water area within it. Mount Penatabo. Don't know. There is a view here, so let's go and see. Um, I think I missed it. Okay, hang on. Let's try that again. Back out some. I might not be able to do it from that one. So we'll try from a different one. We'll go here. There we go. And this is Mount Panatabo, and you're inside the crater here. And this is the lake area within the volcano. It looks like a park up in here as well. Uh, hang on. The next earthquake was a 4.1 in Coral Islands. And it was 10 up kilometers deep. Again, you can see that the subduction zone goes this way at, a milli at 78 millimeters per year. And is hitting near Ibeko. And Yemenske Ridge Volcanoes. Vernansky Ridge Volcano is a cinder cone. And Ebeko is a Soma Volcano. Now, I can't tell you. I need to look up what a Soma Volcano is. Let's take a look real quick. A Soma volcano is also known as a Sumerian, a volcano caldera that has been partially filled by a new central cone. Okay. All right, our next earthquake is a 4.1 in Taiwan, and it's 17 kilometers deep. And we can see that this here is a continental convergent boundary.
And we have a town here. Or we have water area here, but we have houses here as well. So they may or may not have felt it because it looks like it's kind of out here in the hills. But as I said, again, here is a water area that runs through here. The next earthquake is a 5.2 south of Java, Indonesia. And it is, a hun it is 10 of kilometers deep. And it's sitting on the subduction zone. And as we can see, the subduction zone runs through this way at 70 millimeters per year. Our next earthquake was a 4.2. Buryatia, wait a minute. Buryatiba, Russia. Sorry, didn't read that correctly for a minute. And it's 10 kilometers deep. And it's sitting on the Continental Transform Fault. As you can see, the red line that runs through here. And we'll see what the land area looks like. We can tell that this is mountainous here. And there's also water over there. And here, so it's hitting in an area with water. This line down here, I believe there's, no, there's not, but it looks like there may be a road that goes through here. Yeah, this is 81K-041, so that would be a road. The next earthquake is a 4.8 Samoa Island region, and it is 10 F kilometers deep. And we can see that the subduction zone goes through here at 237 millimeters per year. So this is subduction zone. And it is hitting up near where the Karakoa volcano is. And as we pull back, we can see that this area goes down through the chromatics and into New Zealand. And this is American Samoa over here. The next earthquake was a 4.6 in Vanuatu. This here is a subduction zone. The closest volcano is Trader's Head Volcano, which is a stratovolcano. And as you can tell, these look like little underwater seamounts here. The little pimple things on the screen. The next earthquake was a 4.3 south of Sambawa, Indonesia. It was 10 F kilometers deep. And also near a subduction zone. That there is the oceanic convergent boundary. And these two earthquakes here show, are showing movement. You can tell this one hit first and then this one. Well, actually it was this one, this one, and then this one. The next earthquake was a 4.0 Oaxaca, Mexico, and it was four kilometers deep, hitting on land.
looks like right outside of a town. There's a Walmart right there. The next earthquake was a 4.3 East Timor region. This one was 10 kilometers deep. And we can see that this here is the oceanic transform fault. This is Timor Leste. So, oceanic transform fault runs up to the Continental Transform Fault, and this is Continental Transform Fault here. That runs up to the Continental Rift Boundary. So we have Transform Faults and Rift Boundaries here. The next earthquake was a 4.1 Central Mediterranean Sea. We can see it's just sort of out here in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. I don't see any lines around it, so there could be a fault, but I don't see any fault lines. The only closest ones are over here, which is the subduction zone. So it just implies subduction and movement. And this is, that was Malta there. The next earthquake was a 4.1 Sulawesi, Indonesia. It was 10 kilometers deep. This one is hitting next to the oceanic convergent boundary. The next earthquake was a 4.7 in Western Turkey, where we still have an ongoing swarm. And that is next to the Continental Transform Fault. We also have a town here, Bolu. The next earthquake was a 5.2 in northwestern Iran. Now noting that there is water here. And it sort of seems to be out here in desert area. Mountainous too. We can see all the volcanism over in this area here. So it wouldn't surprise me if that is a volcanic field. The next earthquake was a 4.2 in the Banda Sea. And it was 14 kilometers deep. Hitting next to the oceanic convergent boundary, which is here. And this is a continental transform fault, so they run into each other here. The next earthquake was a 4.7 Kermadec Island region, 20 of kilometers deep. Let's we'll see if we can find that one on here. Let's see, I'm missing here. This one, two, three. There you go, 4.7. I believe that's it, but I don't believe that that's it.
4.7 is right here. There. Unnoticeable, 33 kilometers deep. And I got a four point, got 4.2. So 4.7 is what EMSC has it as. The next earthquake was a 4.1, Chiapas, Mexico, at 145 kilometers deep. You can see that there is mountain here. And it's near the border. The next earthquake was a 4.5 near west coast of Colombia. And this one was 10 half kilometers deep. And you can see this is a subduction zone here. And it looks like it's right on the beach. The next earthquake was a 4.7, Alberta, Canada. Appears to be in a field here in the woods. Let's see. No idea what that is. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about money. The long-awaited federal digital payment system is to launch in July. The Federal Reserve's digital payment system, which it promises will speed up the way money moves around the world, will debit in July. Fed now, as it will be known, will create a leading-edge payment system that is resilient, adaptive, and accessible, said Richmond Fed President Tom Barkin who is the program's executive sponsor. The system will allow bill payments, money transfers such as paychecks and disbursements from the government, as well as a host of other consumer activities to move more rapidly and at a lower cost according to the program's goals. Participants will complete a training and certification process in early April, according to a federal announcement. With the launch Drawing near, we urge financial institutions and their industry partners to move full steam ahead with preparations to join the FedNow service, said Ken Montgomery, the program executive and first vice president at the Boston Fed, which helped spearhead the project under former Boston Federal President Eric Rosengren. Institutions that participate in the program will have seven-day, 24-hour access as opposed to a system <coughs> currently in place that it closes on weekends. Program activists say it will get money out to people much more quickly. For instance, they said government payments like those issued in early days of COVID pandemic would have been credited to accounts immediately rather than the days it took to reach most people. Some Fed officials say the program even could supplement the need for a central bank digital currency. <sighs> Sounds like the One World Government Payment Program. Let's see. The new government operated payment system often used as an argument against the need for crypto's payment innovations will have its first certificates 
first participants for certified within weeks. The U.S. Federal Reserve is activating its long-awaited real-time payment system in July. The central bank said in a weekday, week, in a Wednesday statement, marking a transition that some have seen as a government challenge of the crypto sector instant transaction advantages. The Fed now service meant to solve the existing delays for clearing financial transactions between institutions will begin certifying its first participants at the beginning of next month. The system will operate around the clock and provide immediate full access to funds. We urge financial institutions and their industry partners to move full steam ahead with the per pre preparations to join the FedNow services. Anyways, that's the update for the banking industry and what they're doing. So scientists are using the volcanoes off of Oregon coast as a means to predict when they can forecast eruptions. And they're using a small submarine and they state that as magma rises up underneath and accumulates under the surface, the whole volcano inflates like a balloon and the pressure builds up. Eventually that magma opens up a crack, finds a way out erupts lava on the seafloor, then the whole volcano quickly subsides back down. It's a little counterintuitive, but more the volcano seafloor rises, the less water it has on top of it. And the less water there is pressing down, the lower the water pressure readings on the ocean floor. As inflation is happening in the volcano, we will see a corresponding decrease in pressure in these instruments on the surface of the volcano. The bottom pressure recorders use this change in water pressure to reveal how much the volcano has grown. Chadwick says the surface of axial will rise eight to 10 feet as it builds towards an eruption. By collecting data year after year, the researchers on the ship can track changes in the volcano as it inflates with magma to a literal breaking point. Volcano risk. Volcanologists can often forecast the eruption of volcanoes a few days in advance. But predicting eruptions on a large, longer time scale is much more difficult. A big component of our research is trying to understand what triggers eruptions, Nooner says. And then hopefully we can learn enough about these systems. We can then start to look at other systems that might pose more of a hazard for people. Nooner and Chadwick forecasted a 2015 axial eruption about seven months in advance. This was the first accurate volcanic eruption forecasted on the planet based off ground deformation data alone, said Haley Cabanas, an assistant professor of geology at the College of Charleston, who's working with the science team on the Thompson. Cabanas was an assistant professor at Eastern K Kentucky University at the time of the axial research cruise. Half the people in the Pacific Northwest live within the 60 miles of an active volcano, Mount Hood, Rainier, Three Sisters, St. Helens, and Mount Shasta are all categorized as very high risk volcanoes by the US Geological Survey, but only one, Mount St. Helens, has erupted in our lifetime. The Axial Seamount, with its three recent eruptions in 1998, 2011, 2015, has been more active than any volcano in the contiguous United States. In addition, Axial is the best monitored deep sea volcano in the world because of the fiber optic cables sending real-time data from the caldera directly back to the Oregon coast. Any additional insight these researchers could learn from the Axial to better understand and predict volcanic activity would ultimately save lives. This volcano, when it erupts, it doesn't pose any great threat, any great risk for people. But what can we learn from this system and hopefully apply to volcanoes on land that do have the potential to cause a lot of harm and to kill people is really valuable. Now, remember when the earth, the volcano erupted, 
off the coast of Oregon, it sent sea rafts, and people were finding sea rafts on the beaches. Um, Axial is a sea shield volcano that sits on the Juan de Fuca Ridge, west of the Cascadia subduction zone. We're going to look for it. And that one is unmanned. That's the axial seamount right here. So it is this one right here. This is the axial seamount. And it's a submarine volcano. <clears throat> Where, okay, it's axial is a shield volcano that sits on the Juan de Fuca, west of the Cascadia subduction zone, where two tectonic plates are spreading apart. There's volcanic activity all up and down the ridge, and that's where new seafloor is created by eruptions. But axial doesn't seem to blow its top when it erupts like Mount St. Helens. Instead, the magma below often causes it to crack open on its slopes and ooze lava, kind of like Kilauea does on Big Island of Hawaii. We are trying to understand how the magma moves around, where it comes from, how it's distributed, how the magma moves leading up to an eruption, during an eruption, what happens right after an eruption? These are the things that are not really well understood that volcanoes in general. Another thing Axial has in common with Hawaiian volcanoes is it sits atop a hot spot, essentially a magma pipeline from deep in the earth. This additional source of magma is a reason Axial is so ac active. Okay. Hi guys, so I'm finishing up this evening's update and I will post I will post this video tonight at 5 p.m. Right now I'm looking at Canada and uh, Canada has had three earthquakes today. So we've had a 4.5 and I believe I spoke about this one in the last video. However, we're going to go look this up. This one was 10 kilometers deep, 34 kilometers south-southwest of Nukwai, Colombia, population 2,700. And this is down in Colombia. So we're moving on to the next one. Actually, this one is next to the subduction zone. That's Colombia. Alberta, Canada was the one that I had talked about in the last video. It was a 4.8, 10 kilometers deep. I'm still going to go look it up on Google Earth again because there has been three earthquakes there. There is something here. I'm definitely curious. It looks like oil. And somebody had asked me about that, so yes. You can see all the little lines across here. Check out all these lines. But you can see the big ones over here and over here and over here. We move on to the next one. Excuse me while I get lost a little bit. There was a 3.8, same area. Alberta, Canada, five kilometers deep. 
we'll see where this one's hitting. This one is near where those that area is that I just showed y'all. Let's see how far away from it it is. Within one mile, 1.6. No views, but I just showed y'all this. Moving on to the next one. If we have a next one. And we don't wait, we have a 5.0 in the state of yeah, Micronesia. And this will be our last one for today. Oops. And then we'll look at Oregon Live Earthquake Map. And this is going to be a subduction zone here. Subduction zone and subduction zone. And it takes a corner here. Now, if you note down here, it ends off, it intersects with the oceanic spreading rift and the oceanic transform fault. So that's where it subducts, and then it goes into the oceanic transform fault, and then up into the oceanic spreading rift. Okay, let's look at Oregon Live Earthquake Map. We can go up here to Canada and see that this is where these earthquakes have been taking place at. There's two listed. One is a 5.0 and the other is a 4.8. And then you noted that on EMSC there was also a 3.8 and it has not been listed yet. So I can show you that on EMSC. We go to today, today, we hit all the ones for Canada, and you can see there was a 3.8, 5.0, and a 4.8. 4.8 was 10 kilometers deep, 5.0 was 10 kilometers deep, and the 3.8 was 5 kilometers deep. And then I'm looking to see if there was anything on the East Coast for today. And yesterday there was a 2.4 Tennessee area. And I'm not seeing anything else here on the East Coast, though there should be some activity happening soon. Yesterday was 1.9 over here. Ridgely, Tennessee. Day before that, there was a 1.7 in the New Madrid area of Missouri. And then the day before that, the day before that, there was a 1.7, Marston, Missouri. And then let's look up how many earthquakes have happened for California today.
I'm reading a 2.1, a 2.1, a 3.2. That was in Baja. Hang on. Let me do this again. Okay. Now I go through this and I take out the ones that aren't needed for California. Did I take out the Baja California? Okay. All right. We have a 2.1 that was five kilometers deep, Northern California. Central California, 2.1 that was 10 kilometers deep. Channel Islands region, California, 2.1, three kilometers deep. Channel Islands region, California, 2.0, it was seven kilometers deep. Northern California, 2.9, three kilometers deep. And a 2.2, 13 kilometers deep in greater Los Angeles, California. And you probably have lots of small ones that are not listed on EMSC. And let's see what USGS has to say for today. Okay, so we're looking at what USGS says. And we're gonna go down to the bottom. We're gonna see that there was a 4.5 Fiji, which was here. I can pull it up. So it was a 4.5 Fiji, 4.8 Karakira, Solomon Islands, 4.5 North Coast of Papua New Guinea, here, right here, a 5.4 Sarangi, Philippines, right here. 4.6 San Pedro, Colombia, here. 7.0 Kermadec Islands, here. 5.0 Kermadec Islands, here. 4.7 San Lorenzo, here. 5.2 King Kong, Indonesia, which is right on the lines. 4.8, Hai Hai Fo, Tonga. And I am not seeing it, where is it? All the way up here. 4.6, Port Vila, Vanuatu. 4.8, Western Turkey, 5.2, Northwestern Iran, 4.7, Kermadec Island region, 4.6, near the west coast of Colombia, all the way over here, 4.8, Alberta, Canada, 5.0, Peace River, Canada, up here. And a 5.0, North Northeast of Colonia, Micronesia. Okay, you guys, thank you for watching the update. Hope y'all are doing well. Please be safe. Remember to like, subscribe, and to share. And much love.